we can use diversity to connect with society, with people. And so I feel that we are now in a moment where it's more in the mindset of leaders, but at the same time, because consumers, employees, different stakeholders are asking for that. Welcome to Hydric Leadership Podcast Series. My name is Roberto Hall. I'm the partner in charge of Hydric and Struggles here in Colombia. I am here with the Managing Director and Senior Country Officer for Colombia at JP Morgan, Angela Hurtado. Thank you very much for being here, Angela. Roberto, thank you very much for the invitation. It's an honor to be here with you. Thank you very much. Yes, in Hydric and Struggles, we try to do this with leaders around the world, and we are very proud to have you here. Angela Hurtado is the Managing Director and Senior Country Officer for Colombia at JP Morgan. She's responsible for the firm's operation and client contacts in the country across its line businesses, and she has greatly contributed to the expansion of JP Morgan's in Colombia and the region as well, dealing with international clients and local clients. She also, and it's very important for this conversation, she is an independent director at Bolsa Valores de Colombia, which is our stock market here in Colombia. And she's the chairperson of Women in Connection, a very interesting organization. So thank you again, Angela. I have a couple of questions to start the conversation, if that's okay with you. That's perfect. What do you see as the benefits and the challenges, Angela, of having a non-executive directorship position and a current executive role at the same time? Since you are dealing with JP Morgan and at the same time you have two non-independent roles as board person. How does each role influence the other one? Yeah, that's a very interesting question, Roberto, because probably it has been more organic than planet. I think that when you are in an executive role as the one that I have at JP Morgan, you realize that there is many ways you can impact. And I think that the creation of Woman in Connection, that is, as you mentioned, a nonprofit organization, that works in, in female leadership roles, I will say that there is positive and challenging things that I can bring to the conversation. The positive thing that I can have in my mind is that probably through the different roles, I can generate an extension of what I really believe. What does it mean? So I think that I have been very lucky to play the role that I have at JP Morgan. But for me, going farther than the executive role and trying to impact the society through the organization of Women in Connection, for me, is being consistent. And I think that is something that I can leverage in terms of influence beyond the corporate world. I think that particularly now, I feel that leaders need to become closer to the society, needs to make sure that people understand the importance of the corporate roles. And I think that through that opportunity of non-executive roles, you are able to generate that type of bridges. At the same time, I think that when you are able to have the experience from the corporate world, you realize how important is try to bring some of that experience to the non-necessary executive roles. And I think that for me, that has been a challenge because first you have to manage your time is sometimes when you get involved in something that is passionate for you, it's important to keep the equilibrium and the time that you dedicate to each of the roles. But I also think that one of the other challenges that I face is that you don't necessarily realize that when you are not in the corporate world, Execution is a privilege. What does it mean? That when you are in an organization that is not necessarily in the corporate world and you try to generate impact or generate results, you don't necessarily have the same toolkits that you have in the corporate world. You are building something completely new. So I think that managing that type of frustration can help you to pursue what you are willing to get, that is impact and results, but understanding that there are different ways to get it and is not always the way you have learned in the corporate world. I think that another important point for me, it's around the role of the private sector. I think that 
we are a crucial actor. The change that we generate in many lives is so important, but we are not necessarily get used to go deeper and show it to many of our stakeholders. So I think that at the same time, being able to participate in those not executive roles help us to make more clear the power that we are as private actors in the society. So I think that those are the type of interesting things that had happened to me in the experience of bringing, you know, together Woman in Connection with J.P. Morgan. I will say that in the case of my role as independent uh, board members of the Bolsa de Valores of Colombia, I think that probably it's a little bit different because I already have a role in capital market construction. So I think that there is more link to my role. It's more fluid. So I will feel that it's a little bit more different than the role that I play at uh, Woman in Connection versus my executive role. Angela, how are you seeing organizations and individuals themselves driving the conviction that gender equity drives productivity and well-being? What are you seeing? Are there any changes about the perspective or the public organization and civil organizations in order to achieve this? Yes, I feel that we are in a completely different momentum than I will say five, ten years ago. Even if this diversity discussion has been in probably in other countries for many years, I feel that in Colombia there is now a completely different level of discussion. Now companies, leaders, even think tanks, uh, governments, policymakers, they understand that we are not bringing the discussion or the awareness because it's something that we just, you know, thinking in the short term. But because I feel that now there is a belief that this can be a way to improve the society. Now, I feel that unfortunately in other countries, the discussion has become more political. But I feel that in the case of Colombia, we are in a place where the discussion is more around the benefits that for men and for women can bring diversity. I feel that Colombia, it's a moment where we can use diversity to connect with society, with people. And so I feel that we are now in a moment where it's more in the mindset of leaders, but at the same time, because consumers, employees, different stakeholders are asking for that. So I think we are in a much better position than a couple of years ago. And how important is it for women to get involved in organizations such as Women in Connection? That's a very important question. I will say that it's important, but depends on what you want. I think that women, because our women are not necessarily willing to go and fight for diversity. I think that in the case of Woman in Connection, this is an organization or even any other organization that works in diversity matters. It requires conviction, it requires time, and it requires work. So it depends on what you want, the level of influence that you want to generate. But I wouldn't say it's the only way you can, you know, help on driving diversity. You can do it in your own family or in your own space of impact. I think that an organization like Women in Connection is an organization that put leadership works to help others. And this is not necessary for everyone because it requires a lot of work. And I think that there is people for everything. And I will invite people that really wants to drive change, but are also willing to put a lot of effort in doing that. Of course, I think that for women, it's important because probably you can get a better understanding of why diversity is an important matter. It's not clear for everybody. And I think that we need to start to understand why it's not necessarily, you know, a silly thing to think, but a crucial improvement for society. Yes, that's great, Angela, what you just said. And in terms of gender diversity, specifically among Colombian leadership teams, there are no legal quotas or requirements. 
but the government passed a law in 2000 requiring that a woman hold at least 30% of top decision-making position in the public sector. How do you look this in the private sector? Is there a trend? What's happening? What's your view on that? Roberto, I think that is a such an important discussion around the quotas, the targets that companies can implement. And I will say that today, after so many years of learning about diversity, diversity is not a goal. It's not the end. Diversity is a way to achieve something. And that something should be much better for companies, for governments, for society. So when you feel that the objective for companies is linked to get 30 or 50 or 40 percent, whatever, in terms of gender diversity, it shouldn't be alone. It should be probably and hopefully a way to bring more diversity, to generate more visibility about diversity, but not necessarily because the objective is to get 30 or 50 percent. Is because you have policies, corporate policies, that helps the company to drive and to help in terms of the cultural change. So the 30 or the 50 percent should be the result of the efforts that companies are getting in changing the mindset and the culture of the company. Unfortunately, when you put it that way, it's not necessarily that easy. And companies and leaders and C-levels, executive levels, need to understand that even if that's the objective, it's not necessarily always easy to get it. So that's why sub-targets, hard targets, or even quotas are a way to get an improvement or a higher speed in terms of the changes. But for me, it's not necessarily the goal, it's the way to change the way we are doing the things in the corporate world. Just perfect. What are your perspectives on some ways that leaders can foster a culture of allyship and inclusion in general within their companies? I think that is a growing process, Roberto. I feel that we are in a moment where leaders are challenged to change the way they have uh, lived in the last decades. And I feel that now we probably feel more comfortable making mistakes, using the teams as a powerful tool to grow the organizations. So probably we are, as leaders, can feel less lonely about how to drive organizations. I think that probably that's the best way to generate a real path for culture of generating that type of allies, partnership. And when you are sure that you are not alone, that you have a team and you are conscious and active, making sure that that team is diverse and you are listening and not necessarily just, you know, making sure that you have the answers, but probably you are more important generating the questions. I think that's the way all the teams can become more productive and generating more inclusion. Because as you mentioned, I think that you can bring diversity, but if people doesn't feel included in the discussion, in the decisions that are made by the companies or by organization or by teams, then you are not necessarily, you know, you probably you can change the policies, but not necessarily change the culture that at the end is what is going to last in the long term. Thank you very much, Angela. This has been a great conversation and congratulations for your success so far with Women in Connection and JP Morgan as well. So thank you very much, Angela. Thank you, Roberto, for the invitation. And I hope that that's useful and I really enjoyed the conversation. 